Hello and welcome to the first Siebel CRM update summary for 2023, brought to you by the Siebel Hub, the number one independent knowledge and training resource for Siebel CRM. On the 20th of January, Oracle has made the latest update for Siebel CRM generally available. Siebel CRM update 23.1 marks the arrival of Siebel CRM industry applications 23.0. Despite being simply the successor to 22.12, Oracle packed quite a few interesting features and enhancements, along with several bug fixes into the January 23 installer. This release does not include one, but two pre-built integrations with Oracle Cloud products. The first is aimed at customers using the Siebel Clinical Trial Management System, aka CTMS, which can now be integrated with the cloud-based Oracle Health Sciences Clinical One platform. The second integration is for Siebel Field Service and supports data synchronization between Siebel CRM and Oracle Field Service Cloud. For good measure, Oracle added an interesting enhancement to the incremental migration process, but more on that later. Let's take a look at the pre-built integration with Oracle Clinical One. This integration is built on top of the Siebel REST API and supports bi-directional data synchronization between Siebel CRM and Clinical One for various entities, such as subject visit templates, sites, and item library. Information about how to set up and use the new integration touchpoints is included in the updated Clinical Trial Management System Guide and REST Guide in Siebel Bookshelf. The second pre-built integration is with Oracle Field Service Cloud. This integration is built on the capabilities of Oracle Integration Cloud, OIC, and supports use cases such as appointment booking and skill-based assignment. Data related to these use cases is synchronized between Siebel CRM and Oracle Field Service Cloud in real time. For details on this new integration, please refer to the Field Service Guide in Siebel Bookshelf. With the addition of the aforementioned new cloud integration touchpoints, Oracle has quite the substantial track record for their goal of providing customers with a broad array of solutions to augment Siebel CRM with modern-day cloud solutions. At the end of 2021, Siebel CRM was equipped with pre-built integration touchpoints for Unity, Analytics Cloud, and Intelligent Advisor. In 2022, Oracle added CrowdTwist and OCI AI services integration further expanding the capabilities of their flagship CRM product. Not Missing a Beat 2023 sets off with two additions to this portfolio, with hopefully more to come in the future. The final enhancement in the Siebel CRM 23.1 update package is the ability of an active Siebel application session to detect a new workspace version automatically. In versions prior to 23.1, users would have to start a new session to take advantage of new configurations that were delivered by incremental migrations. With 23.1, Oracle has added a new set of server component parameters to implement a polling cycle. The cycle time defaults to 15 minutes or 900 seconds, but can be modified by server administration. At the end of each polling cycle, the object manager looks up the latest workspace version and, if the version is changed, reloads the session's repository cache. All the end user has to do is navigate to another view, and the configuration changes for the new workspace version will become available in the current version. And there you have it. Siebel 23 is off to a great start, and so is the Siebel Hub learning experience. Check out the updated Siebel Hub curriculum, including the Siebel 23 Plus workshop, which provides Siebel practitioners with all the information they need to work with the latest Siebel CRM updates. Go to SiebelHub.com and start learning today. Hi, it's Alex from the Siebel Hub, and today we are going to answer the old question, is it an upgrade? or an update. So let's see. As of Siebel 23 and higher, you have upgrade or update pass depending on the version you're currently on. So if you have 7.5, 7.7, that's really old. That's 20 years and older. So you're in for a two-step upgrade according to the upgrade guide in Bookshelf. If you are slightly higher, 7.8 to 8.2, you still have to do a one-step full upgrade 
And for both, you still on high interactivity, on Internet Explorer, unbelievable. Yes, you have to go to OpenUI as well. The two-step upgrade takes you to 8.1.1, and if you have that, or any other version up to IP16, you're in for what's known as an incremental repository merge, or IRM. So all of these are upgrades, and that means to go from these versions to the latest 20.3, this is a month-long project measured in person months or person years and we're not here to cover all of it you need to get professional help from consulting and oracle to get your upgrade project on the way and get to the latest siebel crm so if you already are on ip17 or anything higher than that including 18 19 20 you name it then we talk about updates and an update is measured in person days. So it's just a matter of a few days to get your environment from that older version to the latest 23.x or higher. So let's dive a little bit into the update paths that we have. So there are a few mandatory steps you have to take. You have to make sure you back up your environment database, then you run what's known as the Modular Deployment Engine, or MDE, which does all the binary stuff, really. And then you run the Post-Install Database Update. This is mandatory, and it updates your database, that's why I take a backup, with schema, C data, and manifest data that brings in, well, the mandatory stuff that Oracle has developed since your last version. Now, there are a few optional steps as well, depending on your implementation, such as running the repository upgrade, that you decide upon information from Oracle in the release notes or bookshelf, and it runs only on the development environment and brings new, well, repository stuff into your repository, along with schema, C data, and manifest. If you have to follow some configuration instructions from Oracle, you also do that in the DR environment. In any environment, there could be any known issues that you need to fix. And administrative changes might also be on your menu. So let's look at the development update in greater detail. You start with backing up your environment and database. Make sure you have a safe point to go back to. You shut down the software on that machine, Siebel Server, Gateway, or AI. And then you run the MDE, typically on the first Siebel Server, because that's where the post-install database update runs as well. It has to be run once per database. And if that doesn't complete successfully, you have to rinse and repeat until that's successful. Then you run the MDE to update any other Siebel software, any other Siebel servers, gateways, AIs, and don't forget Siebel tools or developer web client or mobile web client. Then it's time to start up that development enterprise so you can decide if you have a repository upgrade. Now let's do the fast track. Let's say, no, we don't need a repository upgrade. We have no configuration instructions, no administrative changes. That will mean we're done with the development update but there uh, might be just a longer path. So when you have decided to run the repository upgrade, you of course have to run it and successfully so. If there are any config instructions, that's developer work in web tools too, and that has to be tested and delivered. Now, administrative changes depend on what version you are, what features you're using. So let's say you have some, and then you of course have to implement them and now we're done now let's take a look at test or production or rr environments we start with a backup shut down the software run the modular deployment engine in update mode on the first siebel server to get that post install database update out of the way and then we update any other instances of siebel crm that you have in that environment start up the environment 
if there have been no repo repository changes and no administrative changes to do, we are done. Now, the longer path is, of course, if you had repository changes, you need to go and fire up that migration application to migrate the repository. And don't forget the C data changes from the development to the RR environment. Make sure you test that thoroughly. And if you have any administrative changes, depending on your implementation, you have to implement those. And then we're done with the update of a test or production environment. Thank you.